Good morning, everybody. It's uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, we'll start the meeting. Um, just I'll silence my computer. Um, we'll start off, please, with item number one, which is apologies. Yes, Chair, we've received apologies from Councillor Abrahams, Councillor Hudson, Councillor Pritchard, and Councillor Waring. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and uh, we'll move on to item number two, uh, declarations of interest. Um, have we any declarations of interest? No? no? Okay. Um, the minutes of the meeting held on the 15th of September, which seems a long way away, but it's not that far away, but it just seems it. Yes. So, David, are you happy with the minutes on the 15th? Okay. Um, can we sign them off on that basis? Yeah. So, yep, minutes are approved. Thank you. And have you got a copy for me to sign? Thank you. And uh, we'll move straight into the agenda. Uh, item number four, Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981, and this is the proposed addition footpath from Beacon Farm to Lower House Farm in Hopton and Coton. And uh, would you like to give the presentation, please? That was Hannah, is it? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Chair Members. Um, so this is an application for the addition of a public footpath between public footpath six and Wilmore Hill Lane by Lower House Farm in the parish of Hopton and Cotton. A copy of the line of the route can be seen at Appendix B and it's marked A to B and C to D. So the application was submitted based on historical evidence. In support of the application was a Rights of Way Act 1932 industry estate document and a stopping up order dated 1959. Officers also obtained a relevant parish survey card. So if I deal with the evidence to begin with. So the, the Rights of Way Act 1932 register for the industry estate is a document that outlines all the routes within a specific area. In this case, industry that were considered to be public rights of way. Accompanying this document was a map showing the routes that were considered to be public as stated in the document, and this was deposited under the Rights of Way Act 1932. The map showing the industry estate shows a route running along the same line as the alleged route with the annotation FP next to it. The route is numbered 15. The register refers to Route 15 as from road also southwest of Beacon Farm, past Old Quarries to Lower House Farm, Hopton Industry Estate. So this description matches up with the route on the map and the alleged route. There is nothing in the description that specifically states that this route was classed as a footpath, but when the register is viewed in conjunction with the map, the annotation of FP depicted alongside the route is supportive evidence that the route was considered to be a footpath. When considering the stopping up order, stopping up orders are legal documents that deal with the extinguishment of highways. If all the correct procedures and provisions have been followed, then a stopping up order is evidentially conclusive regarding the existence of a public right of way. So particularly in the absence of any other contrary evidence, such as a further legal order, due to the fact that it is a legal document. So this particular order was made pursuant to the, the requisitioned Land and War Works Act 1948. Three footpaths are mentioned in the order as being stopped up. The route relating to the alleged route is referred to as Route 3 in Part 1 of the schedule of the order. The route number 3 forms the southern section of the, the alleged route, specifically marked C to D at Appendix B. So therefore, the document shows that the southern section of the alleged route, point C to D, were legally, was legally stopped up and extinguished as a result of the Second World War. 
The difficulty with this document is it only deals with the southern section of the route. It does not refer to the remainder of the route, that being points A to B. So as the entirety of the route is not referred to as being extinguished, it is assumed that the remainder of the route, points A to B, did continue to exist, although the route would no longer connect to another public highway to the south, and therefore essentially would become a cul-de-sac route. The Requisitioned Land and War Works Act of 1945 provided for orders to be made for the permanent stopping up or diversion of highways which had been temporarily stopped up or diverted during the Second World War. It can be argued that this order deals authoritatively with the previous status of the right-of-way in question, thereby it existed as a public footpath. In relation to the parish survey card, this also depicts a route running along the same line as the alleged route, and the route is number 13. The card refers to route 13 as a footpath. The map accompanying the card shows the alleged route and the southern section, again marked C to D, recorded as closed. The statement accompanying the draft definitive map refers to the southern section of the route being temporarily closed under defence regulations. When the draft map and statement were being prepared, it was originally considered that the closure of the southern section of the route, point C to D, was only of a temporary nature and therefore it should be added in its entirety to connect with public footpath 6, just south of Beacon Farm. However, the subsequent stopping up order dated 1959 did extinguish the southern section of the alleged route, having legal effect that meant although the stopping up may originally have been of a temporary nature, it was determined that public use of the route had been continuously prevented and therefore it was necessary to permanently stop up that section of the path. Although there is no evidence that the remainder of the route points A to B ceased to legally exist, the route was not added onto the definitive map and statement of public rights of way, possibly because this would have resulted in the route being a cul-de-sac as the route no longer connected to a public highway to the south. It is unclear as to why only part of the route was included in, up in, in the stopping up order and not the entirety of the route. So there is a prima facie assumption that a public right of way should connect from one public highway to another public highway. There is also the maxim, once a highway, always a highway. The fact that the route is referred to in the 1959 stopping up order is strong evidence of the understanding that the route existed as a public footpath. As the entirety of the route was not extinguished, there is an argument that the remainder of the route, points A to B, still exists as a public footpath in the absence of any further legal events. However, the route would now be a cul-de-sac as it no longer connects to a public highway to the south. So as detailed in the report, there are several examples of case law that deal with the issue of cul-de-sac routes. The case law supports the contention that a cul-de-sac can be a public highway and that a public right-of-way does not need to connect to another public highway. However, the case law indicates that even a route that does not connect to another public highway still needs to be a route that provides public access to a place that the public have a, a reason to go to even where that is merely, for example, to visit a place of natural beauty. Therefore, it could be argued that a route still needs to have a public purpose. In this case, it could be argued that the remainder of the route subject to this application does not provide a specific purpose for members of the public, as there is no evidence that where the route would terminate leads to a specific point of interest for members of the public to go to. Um, so when we consider the landowner evidence, on submission of the original application, RAF Stafford was identified as owning land adjacent to the claimed route, and they submitted a copy of the stopping up order, as, all, as we've already discussed. No other, no other landowner has commented on this application, either when it was submitted or following circulation of the report. Hopton and Cotton Parish Council responded to the application when it was submitted, advising that they were against the application. They advised that there are several footpaths in the parish and the applied for route is not necessary. 
The Ramblers Association also responded, advising that if the route connected to public footpath six at the southern end, it would provide a useful round walk between Beaconside and Hopton. So when we consider the relevant legal tests in this application, the application was submitted under Section 53, 3C1, under the Wildlife and Countryside Act. Therefore, there are two legal tests to consider. That is, that is whether it can be said that the alleged route subsists on the balance of probabilities, or whether it can reasonably be alleged that the route sub subsists. So to summarise, the stopping off order shows that the route marked C to D was legally extinguished and this was a public footpath. Unfortunately, the order only deals with a small section of the alleged route. As the order does not refer to the entirety of the route being legally stopped up, it must be taken that the remainder of the route, marked A to B, continued to exist as a public footpath and therefore still exists as a public footpath. Therefore, if the route marked A to B is found to legally exist, the route is a cul-de-sac route in that it does not connect to a public highway to the south. Case law supports that a cul-de-sac route can exist as a public highway and right-of-way, although the case law points to the route should still lead to a definitive place or point that the public would have a purpose to go to, although the route does not need to specifically lead to a public place. In this case, there was nothing clear from the evidence that the route would specifically lead to a place that the public would have a purpose to fre frequent. However, in light of the case law and the historical documents, there is evidence of the route's existence marked from A to B as a public footpath, but not for the section of route marked C to D. Therefore, it is officers' opinion that an order should not be made in relation to the section of route marked C to D, but in relation to the section marked A to B, there is evidence that a public right-of-way with the status of, of a foot, footpath subsists and therefore an order should be made to add the section of route from A to B with a recommended width of 1.5 metres. Thank you, and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you very much <coughs> for that uh, slightly convoluted uh, um, situation we have here. Uh, I presume that uh, the communication with RAF Stafford is now the a communication with signals um, uh, because uh, the RAF have only got a small, um, small uh, input at Stafford now. Members, uh, we have a recommendation in front of us. Paul? Hannah, thank you for the report. Uh, I think we've got to go with officer recommendation on this one. A to B is made out as a public footpath. C to D, because of a stopping up order, 59 isn't. Uh, a to B as well, even though it's a cul-de-sac route, uh, the two high court decisions give evidence that even though it doesn't go from a highway to highway, it can still be a route. Uh, so I believe that un under 51.3 C1, we have to put on the definitive map, and I'll propose that. Thank you, David. So we've got... Proposer and a seconder. Uh, all in favour? Unanimous. Okay, thank you so much for that, Hannah. Uh, and we'll move on to um, item number five, uh, Wildlife Countryside Act 1981. And this is the application for an upgrade <coughs> uh, BF 20 Betley Parish to a bridleway. Um, uh, who's taking this? I am Chair. Oh, thank you. Would you like to start? Yes. Good, good morning, Chair and Members. This is the application for an upgrade from a public footpath, which is currently Betley 20, to a public bridleway for a route leading from the main road through Betley along Common Lane to the county boundary with Cheshire. The application was made by Mrs. Wensley Naylon on behalf of the North Staffordshire Bridleways Association, and the route is marked A to B on the plan at Appendix B of the report. In support of the application, Mrs. Nalon included 12 user evidence forms. These are discussed within the report, but in summary, user 13 did not use the route, and user 9, although initially claimed to have used it, in a subsequent letter advised that he had not ridden a path himself and observed the lane being used by occasional horse riders. User 1 did not give any years of use. User 11 used it once or twice a year on horseback between 1948 to 1954. 
Nine users used the route from anything from four years up to 20 years over a period spanning 1972 to 1991 when the application for the upgrade to Bridleway was submitted to the Council. Following the receipt of the application and its supporting user evidence forms, an initial consultation was instigated. This resulted in correspondence from the statutory consultees and organisations with interests within the route. The Ramblers Association had no evidence to offer and the Peak and Northern Footpath Society had no objection to the footpath being upgraded to a bridleway. Bentley and Boltley Parish Council opposed the upgrade on account of safety of user concerns, which of course cannot be taken into consideration. Newcastle Borough Council had no comment to make, although a letter was received from a councillor in his personal capacity who provided observations concerning the route. Although the Ramblers Association had no evidence to offer, a member of the Ramblers forwarded evidence to support the upgrade. This included a copy of a tithe map showing a physical feature on the ground along the route between Newtree Farm and the county boundary, which could be interpreted as having higher rights than a footpath. The member also produced a finance map. The Finance Act map shows the route along the lane ending at Utree Farm, separate from the taxable land holdings. The landowner who owned Utree Farm at the time of the initial consultation, and through which the route runs, provided an evidence form advising that he had known of the route for five and a half years, that he considered the way to be public footpath, but that horses used it occasionally. He had never turned anyone around or prevented usage, although had considered the right to be private. Other landowners along the lane were consulted at the time and objected to the upgrade based on four issues. They referred to ordnance survey plans from 1960 and 1970 marking the route as a footpath. Two further issues that they raised could not be taken into account, including safety and damage to the road surface. The fourth issue disputed the evidence provided by the users and included a petition, which included the number of times residents of the lane had seen horses using it and making comments with regard to the content of the user evidence forms. Officers searched for documentary evidence to support or oppose the claimed upgrade. Plans from renowned cartographers at the time were found. Ordnance survey maps were located and notes on the original 1953 survey for the first definitive map, following the National Parks and Access to the Countryside Act 1949, were received from Cheshire East County Council. Staffordshire County Council confirmed that the current footpath was added based on the information that was held on the parish survey cards at the time. Between 1819 and 1830, there is no sign on the cartographer's maps that there is any route, although it has to be borne in mind that the scale is small and therefore very likely that such bridleways would not be shown. The Railway Book of Reference from 1839 to 40 showed markings in the vicinity of current Chalton Public um, Bridleway 5, marked as an occupation road. The tithe map of 1842, three years after the railway book of reference, does show substantial markings on the plan, as do most of the subsequent ordnance survey plans, all suggesting more than a footpath. The tithe map and ordnance survey plans show physical features that assist in interpretation of status, but they do not distinguish as to whether they are public or private rights. Following the completion of the definitive map for Staffordshire, the Ordnance Survey plans showed the route to be a footpath. Bartholomew's plan of 1902 does not show the route. The report was drafted and sent out to the applicant, landowners, statutory consultees and interested organisations. Councillor Paul Northcott advised that he was in support of the application and the Parish Council did not wish to comment and did not provide any evidence. Newcastle Underline Borough Council did not respond and East Cheshire County Council, who were approached for their evidence, provided the information used to produce the first definitive map. Their officer informed me that the route was considered a bridle road when the walking surveys were first conducted. There were further comments from three landowners, including from the landowners of Utree Farm, who had acquired interest in the property in 2000. They did not consider it a bridle way. The other two landowners objected to the potential upgrade one of these landowners actually raised the petition some 30 years ago. They commented on contemporary use and the original user uh, evidence. The British Horse Society and the interested organisations also made comment to the report. The British Horse Society highlighted the tithe map as being good evidence for the upgrade due to the markings on the plan and the colouring of the route. Guidelines, however, suggest that in the absence of a key or explanation, colouring of a route is of little evidential value. The Finance Act details were also provided regarding the lane, discussion of which is within the report. 
The Finance Act plan, however, does not show any markings on the plan between New Tree Farm and the county boundary. North Staffordshire Bridleways Association also commented on the report, raising five main queries. These included an appeal for the council to inquire further into landowners' rights, a query relating to why two plans along the route appeared to show what were to be different standards of council maintainability, the belief that there was just one inclusion that could be drawn from the Finance Act map, concerns as to the interviewing of witnesses, and the fear that the delay in making a decision on the route could affect a decision by the High Speed Rail Link HS2. The council provided responses which were further commented on by the Bridleways Association. Final comments made by the council were there included within all the paperwork. Finally, I turned to the letter dated 3rd of November and supporting documentation received from North Staffordshire Bridleway, uh, Bridleway Society following publication of the report. I respectfully note the comments regarding the Natural Environment and Rural Communities Act 2006 regarding the public and private rights along Common Lane and whether landowners are using the route lawfully and the potential debate concerning interpretation of the Act. Rights which landowners have, which they may or may not be able to prove, are not relevant to the application. The council cannot prove whether or not there were unrecorded private rights over the lane for mechanically propelled vehicles, but whether or not laws have been broken are not the remit of this application. With this application, there is just one legal test to upgrade the footpath to a bridleway, which must be satisfied before a modification order can be made for the route. The test being whether, on the balance of probabilities, this right of way does subsist. It is your officer's opinion that the application for the upgrade between points A to B does not pass the balance of probabilities test under Section 53 3C2 of the Wildlife and Countryside Act 1981. Your officer's recommendation, therefore, is that the evidence for the upgrade to that of bridal way is insufficient to pass the legal test. I'm happy to take your questions. Thank you um, very much for that. It's, it's obviously sort of a, a fairly balanced um, uh, application here that just sort of tips towards um, not upgrading the, the um, footpath to a bridal way. Um, and, and just to clarify, there's no application for a boat or anything strange like that. It's just that this application is, is um, to upgrade uh, footpath 20 from a footpath to a bridleway so so just to stop any hairs running there that, that's correct chair yes thank you easy. paul well i'm not one who always goes with office recommendation but for the second time today uh i believe we've got to really uh balance of probabilities uh the evidence really the user evidence isn't strong to start with uh if, if we if we look at uh and I might just have my, my notes. Uh, even the Ordnance Survey map, which I know is not strong evidence, actually says when the Staffordshire definitive map was made, it was put on there as a footpath, not as a, uh, a bridleway. So really, if we look at all the evidence given us today, uh, I don't think we've got evidence to make a modification order. I believe we've got to reject the application and keep it as it is, uh, as a footpath uh, uh, un un under 53.3c1 again. So I'll propose that uh, we stick as we are. Thank you very much. David, have you any comments? Seconded. Joan. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to read out some comments that I've received from Councillor Northcott. Um, having reviewed the supporting claims and knowing the, the pathway, my concerns relate to the possible misuse of the path if it was upgraded to a bridleway. This would open the potential access to be used by motor-assisted vehicles in turn, it could then pose a safety issue for other users, and of course, the issue of erosion and damage through usage would need to be addressed. In conclusion, I'm inclined to agree with the recommendations from officers. Thank you. Could I just clarify that in the reports, uh, the, the local member actually supported it, but he's now, now um, on, for, on further evidence, decided to support this application? This to support the uh, rejection of this application. Yeah. Okay. I just say that I'm not taking any notification from the member about the damage or to cause or danger afterwards. That's not a matter we can accept as part of the evidence here. So I've made it before I've heard that. But we just okay. need to just make sure that it's, it's on record. Yes, indeed, Chair. Yes, it, it is noted that initially he did. Um, 
He was for the upgrade, but I now note that he is against. But as you say, safety concerns cannot be taken into consideration. Thank you. We, the reason that I um, mention that is that it's, it's really important what local members think about these things and, and uh, the evidence they put forward is, is, is incre incredibly important because they are the local representative. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, I wasn't aware that um, that uh, he, he'd been in touch. So uh, could you possibly thank him for his, his, um, his input? We've got a proposer uh, in terms of Paul Stapes, secondary in terms of David Smith. Uh, all those in favour? Unanimous, so we'll follow the officer, officer's recommendation on that one. Thank right. you for your Thank report. You, and uh, there's no exclusions of the public, uh, so we will um, close this meeting at uh, 10.25, I think it is, there. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you for your time, and thank you for members' time.